describe what a lenticular is. A lenticular is it's taking two images and printing them, um, actually separating them into these sort of strips that then get printed onto these uh, raised angled plastic angles, edges, um, so that one image is printed going one way, one angle. The other image is printed going the other way, the other angle. And that when you bring them together and you look at them, they, it's two images at once. And because we have stereo vision, see things through, you know, two different eyes. Um, when we look at them horizontally, when, when the lenticular is printed as a vertical, you can't actually see one image at a time. You see both of them at the same time. So your brain registers it as this kind of moving image space. Now, if we were to turn them the other way, and you went up and down, you'd see a clear one image one way, one image the other way. But the whole reason for doing this, and what you're looking at is, a, is an image of my textile pieces overlapped with an image of ink drawings. And the whole reason for this, this, this new direction, is that I feel like this sort of captures that immediate sense of overlay of that sort of visual dialogue that's happening in all of my work. And so um, rather than me having to necessarily, and I, it is a process, but having to like have that immediate sense of like working it out in paint, it's like working it out instantly for an image. And when you see it, it's just as soon as you try to make sense of one little area, it quickly slips away and moves into something else. And that's when I feel like my work is successful. That's where I want it to be. Um, because it is like a thought, it is like an idea, it is like an emotion. As soon as we try to grab onto it, we quickly are distracted into something. So, with that in mind, um, I'm going to see, I, we have 15 minutes left to talk a little bit more, but um, I posted on my Instagram site uh, any questions that folks might have about the work. And there were a couple of people I know that are here that had some questions. Um, one of them, and I wanted to address those because um, I think it's important to get want to know what people want to know about it. So um, one of the questions that I was asked was, uh, where do, okay, where do I find, how did, oh wait, we'll start with this one. This is a good one. Um, how did I come upon this method of making? So method of making, method of painting. And what we're talking about are the marks. How did I come upon the mark making? How did I, how, why do I feel like that's part of my visual language? So we're going to go in, back to the textiles for a second. Sitting and sewing and stitching. I used to sti hand stitch a lot of repetitive marks to cover a very large area of fabric. It was one of those um, immediate gratification moments, even though you're hand stitching and it's slow. It's like taking this meditative moment of stitching, 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 moving into the opposite direction, stitching, 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 stitching. Um, it created this beautiful puckered thing that happens with fabric when you stitch it over and over again in these sort of rows like this. And there's a tension there that I really loved. The act of actually stitching and sewing also was something that when I was doing the textiles, just, it was so freeing. It was like I didn't have to think or overthink stuff. I could just, I just knew I was gonna fill this area up with a bunch of red threads, simple stitches, you know, a quarter of an inch in length, over and over and over and over again. And um, they became these kind of, I call them tick marks, or like hash marks in fabric. And what I realized is that it's not just the act of sewing them, but even the act of painting them that is just, it's like so common. <laughs> it's like one of those things that you can totally get preoccupied into and just start making these marks. Just taking these marks down. And then all of a sudden it's like you have an entire, or I have an entire area that's filled with this, this language that references textiles. The other thing that's come out of it are these, like I call them the swoops. The swoops have come, and the, 
the swoops are sort of these like delicate, they remind me of um, portraits of almost like the like old Vermeer portraits of, of like the, a lace cuff or something or like the, actually this is better. It reminds me of the Fragonard painting, The Swing. You know what I'm talking about? The woman on the swing, she's got her foot up, the shoe's about to fall off, the guy's below her, he's about to catch the shoe, and that skirt is like flying, and there's that lace down there. The swoops are that feeling, of that swing, and that lace, and the frill. There's something about the frill that um, I feel like kind of excites me, like brings me into the painting, and then like swoops me on to something else. Um, so that was one question. Uh, another question was, um, when do I find, do you remember the question yet? I'm going to get it. Um, I'm going to ask her. <laughs> What's the most exciting moment? You know, when I hear you talk about it, it almost feels like when the culmination of Yeah, it might be that moment. When is the most exciting moment for me in the work? Um, the most exciting moment. It's, it's when it gets quiet. It's when it doesn't. Yeah, that's the most exciting moment. It's like when I step back. When I'm like, now what? And then I look at it, and I look at it, and I look at it, and I realize two hours have gone by. And I can step away from it. That's the most exciting moment when I'm no longer needed for it. Um, there was another question, uh, he's somewhere in here, that was asking about um, do I consider myself an abstract, or where is Justin? Is Justin around? Can you ask your question? I don't want to get it wrong. You gotta look it up. You're gonna get remember either. It was about abstraction and figurative, right? There was like, do I consider myself an abstract artist well, or a figure? I, I wanna give you your thoughts on like the, the collapse between the, the two zones. There, there just seems to be something that's really happening right now. Yeah. In your work. Just In general. Well. Yeah, I uh, so the collapse between abstract and figurative work. Whoa. <laughs> I can always count on you for that. <laughs> so, the way that I've always looked at abstraction is that you have to start with something. So it's got to begin somewhere. You've got to start with something tangible, right? An idea, a figure. And so I, we're going to use, I can still hear Vise as the prime example of this, because it looks pretty abstract. Um, but this painting actually started off uh, being figurative, and um, because there was, at one point, there was a big figure right through here that kind of looked like it was leaning over a green space of sorts, green field, and, um, and there was a sky over it. And uh, that was too literal. That's, I didn't want to, you know, I feel like I want to have it, my work, be kind of like an enigma or slightly mysterious. So you, I, I am not, com like, this painting for me is very uncomfortable because I see a woman in it. And I see something that looks like bedding or something like that. So that, I, I'm comfortable with it being here because it's part of the process, but it's also very uncomfortable, uncomfortable for me to see actual objects in my work and be like, this is this is a woman, this is a dress, this is a da-da-da, whatever it is. So this started off as a woman leaning over sort of on this green field. I think I was going to turn it into kind of like a couch or something like that. And um, But then the whole point for me was to how far can I abstract this idea or this feeling of like falling over on something. And yet what started to come out of it, of course, there's something that maybe looks like a dress now floating through there, but, the, but, but still capturing this essence or this feeling of falling or slipping. And um, the, I was listening to the pearl fishers a lot while I was painting.
painting this, so that's why it's called I Can Still Hear Bizet. Um, but this, this notion of abstracting things, it's almost like you start with an idea, you start with something concrete, and then how far can you take it so that it still embodies this essence of something, and yet doesn't resemble it at all. And that's, I think, like, you know, I think about that a lot with my work. And then I think about that, um, I look at other, other contemporary artists who are doing stuff similarly, and, and taking these notions, like, somebody who I really love and whose work I look at a lot is Alison Shulnick. And, and also because she had, was heavily influenced by music, too, in a way. And so um, thinking about her stuff and her paintings, and she gets this kind of like a Fausto thing happening. And yet you can still you get the sense of like a field, flowers, uh, person, figure, something like that. So I don't know if that answers that, but I hope it does a little bit. Um, and then to talk, you know, to talk a little bit about music too. So all of, most of these paintings, they have titles from songs, and like music. I think artists tend to listen to a lot of music while they're in the studio. But um, I tend to get hung up on phrases. It's like a weird, it's kind of like a weird intuitive thing that happens where I'm like uh, in the studio working on a piece, and then you know, like thinking about the title of the show also, like all of a sudden something just kind of pops out and then that phrase kind of repeats itself over and over again. And then finally I'm like, that's what this is about. This is, this is about this kind of phrase that's happening. So um, possibly maybe, which is a Bjork song, like thinking a lot about that song while it was happening. Because this piece was a lot of trouble <laughs> for me. Um, <coughs> It's hard to know when to stop fully, mostly because it's so easy to overwork something and to take it too far. Um, somebody had uh, also posted a question of like, how do you know when to stop? And um, so part of the SMAIL award, you get to take a class with uh, different folks here at BCA. And um, the one class that I actually like kind of stuck out was with Kaylin Tom. He taught a painting class, um, which was really uh, mind-blowing because not having done a lot of painting and then watching this person like mix up pigment and <coughs> using pigment binders and stuff within 30 minutes of his class, like I knew how to mix watercolor, acrylic, oil, tempera, like all of these things. It was really incredible. Um, but he also had this, the one thing, important thing that I took away from this class besides learning how to mix. Um, was was this idea of problem solving in paintings. And I'm totally going to butcher this beautiful, he had this wonderful syllabus. If you get a chance to take his class, please take it. But, the, but the, he had this way of talking about when you take something too far and you have to problem solve it. And um, do you, one, keep working? Or do you tra trash it and move on to the next? I am not the person to trash things. I will work it to death until it says something to me. And even, it might take years of working it to death. Um, but this piece, possibly, maybe, it's, fine, it's funny because it was like layer after layer after layer. It started off as an ink painting, and then it moved into some graphite on top of it. And then it moved into acrylic on top of it and like blocking out huge fields of color and then bringing in this sort of uh, acrylic wash on top of it. And then I was like, this isn't working. Wipe it down. And now I'm going to wipe it down. It's like taking black ink and pouring black ink over it and like wiping it down and then highlighting and isolating these. And it's this constant like, possibly, maybe, possibly, maybe. And then hearing, um, and then this Bjork song, of course, like I'm listening to it as part of the soundtrack. And like, this is it. It's this feeling of like, is this possibly going somewhere? Maybe, maybe not. Is this, are we done yet? No, maybe, maybe not. And it's this kind of like fine dance. Um, I still struggle with it. I 
don't think any artist really knows fully like when they're totally done. You either have like for me, it's like I gotta walk away, like totally done here, walking away, or I'm like, let's keep beating this dead horse and see if we can make it come alive again, and then something magical will happen. And then Thank you so much, Wiley. Thanks.